In this video, we'll be looking at the actual sliding filament model, the mechanism of muscle contraction. It can be split up into three parts. The first part will be a stimulation, and then the second part, attachment, and the third part, detachment. So we'll go through these few stages um, as we go along the different pictures here. So the first stage is stimulation. Now, this is the normal state, the relaxed state of uh, the myofibrils or the muscle fibers. We've got our myosin with the myosin uh, tail and the myosin head attached to the um, ADP. And then we've got the actin bonded by the tropomyosin and also held in place by the troponin. Now, keeping in mind that this is only part of the myofibril, it is bundled up together with lots of fibers and wrapped around by the sacrolemma and sacroplasm and sacroplasmic reticulum together. What happens is once the action potential arrives, it will depolarize the sacrolemma, the plasma membrane on the outside. This also in turn depolarizes the sacroplasmic reticulum, and it will then in turn open the voltage-gated calcium channels on the surface of the sacroplasmic reticulum. This will lead to uh, calcium ions being released from the sacroplasmic reticulum, and it will then bind to the troponin. Because of binding of the calcium ions, that means the tropomyosin will be pulled along by the conformational change. It will then expose the actin myosin binding site, like that. And that is the first step of stimulation. And here we come to the second stage, which is uh, attachment. Because it is revealed, then the myosin head can then naturally bind to the binding site, uh, forming cross bridges with it. And what happens next is then it will flex the myosin filament will flex itself and it will pull the actin filament along that direction. So if you imagine that originally it is at this particular position, like so, it will then move it that way, pulling the filament along. And I mentioned this in, in a, another video before, is whenever there is binding, there will be a conformational change, which leads to a movement. Or perhaps when there is movement, uh, that will lead to something being released or binded to it. So in this case, the myosin head binds to the binding site, flexes uh, and moves the actin filament along. In that process, it will release the ADP from the actual myosin head. And that is the attachment and actually the movement as well. Here comes the third stage, which is detachment. Now, I mentioned earlier that uh, the myosin head flexes and it will pull the actin filament along, releasing the ADP. Now, because ADP is being released, ATP now can bind to it. Binding of ATP actually releases the myosin head from the binding site. Now, once it detaches from it, you will need to return the uh, myosin head back to its original position in order for it to pull the actin further along. So, before it was in this particular position, as you can see, drawn in the dotted line here. Now, what happens is that there is a calcium ion that comes along and it will bind to the uh, myosin head. And what happens is that it will activate the ATPase component on the myosin head. And in this sense, it will actually hydrolyze the ATP back into ADP. And then I will have a lone phosphate that will then just go off. And that will give it energy for the myosin head to return back to its original position. This is a very, very important concept in which people often mix up. People often think that actually the flexing of the myosin head will surely require energy. But actually, in this case, you can see the energy of ATP is actually used in returning the myosin head back to its original position, not to flex it. And after it returns to its original position, it will then be allowed to bind to the next actin myosin binding site and the whole process repeats itself again. So let's have a summary of the sliding filament model. This is the relaxed state of the uh, muscle. We've got the myosin with the myosin head attached to ADP, actin filament here with the troponin holding the tropomyosin in place, covering the actin myosin binding site. When the action potential arrives, uh, it will depolarize the sacrolemma, the plasma membrane wrapped around the myofibrils, and it will also depolarize the sacroplasmic reticulum. The voltage-gated calcium channels on the sacroplasmic reticulum will then open, and calcium will diffuse through the sacroplasm um, into, uh, to get to the myosin. Calcium ions themselves will bind the troponin, which will cause a conformational change, a shape change. It will then pull the tropomyosin 
out from the actinomycin binding site, revealing it, like so. Because the actinomycin uh, binding sites are revealed, the myosin head will then bind to these binding sites, forming cross bridges. And then the myosin head will then flex itself, like so, and it will then pull the actin along with it, because it has bound to it at that point. And this movement will release uh, a DP from the myosin head. Because it is now not bound to an ADP, an ATP will come along and bind to the myosin head. This binding changes its conformational shape of the myosin head. It, it will then detach from the actin, in some sense breaking the cross bridges. Because that, remembering that we've got calcium in the cycloplasm around all of these proteins, calcium will then bind to the myosin head, activating the ATPase uh, component on the myosin head. It will then hydrolyze the ATP that were originally bound to it to ADP, an, an inorganic phosphate group. Then this energy released from the hydrolysis of ATP will then return the myosin head from this position back to its own original position. It will then be allowed to bind to the next actinomycin binding site and the whole process repeats itself again. And this is the sliding filament model.